Hey guys, Kaylee here from Expats Everywhere and I just finished an amazing interview with a woman named Jo from the UK. She teaches you how to have a portable career, which means you can work from anywhere. How awesome is that? So sit back and check out her incredible tips. And please bear with us as sometimes the audio gets a little scratchy, but you'll want to bear through it and see what she has to say. Welcome to Expats Everywhere. Can you tell us your name, where you're from, and a little bit about yourself? Sure. I'm Jo Parfit. I'm from the UK. I've been living abroad since the day after I got married, which is actually 31 years and one day ago. Oh, wow. <laughs> Happy anniversary. And uh, yes, we, we were back in England for seven years in the middle of it, but basically, since I was married, I've lived in Dubai, Oman, Norway, the Netherlands, Brunei, Malaysia, and now I'm back in the Netherlands again. And what has taken you to all these different countries? My husband works in the oil industry, so I follow him. I'm a trailing spouse, but I've always, always kept my career alive regardless. So uh, we've had kids. We had kids 27 and uh, 26 years ago in Dubai, and so we've moved with the family as well, and I've always worked wherever we've been. Okay, what kind of job have you had along the way? I'm a writer, I, I suppose in my core, I'm a writer. Um, but I've learned to be flexible along the way and adapt to the market trends and the needs and to the internet and various things along the way. And so uh, I'm a writer, but I'm also an editor, a publisher. And most of my work now is as an author's mentor. I like to work with new authors who uh, want to write a book or have, who have written a book and want somebody by their side through the whole of the process. Because I also, uh, with Jack Scott, who's based in the UK, also run a publishing company, Summertime Publishing, and its sister imprint, Springtime Books. So, yeah, I do many things. Okay, if someone is interested in um, getting help from you, how can they contact you? Well, my name is Joe Parfit, and I have a website called joeparfit.com. And from there, you can click through to my other websites, Career in Your Suitcase, Expert Bookshop, Summertime Publishing, Springtime Books, Writing Me Treats, and Monday Morning Emails. Great, and we will put all of those in the description below so that you can find Joe. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, so tell us about your books. You've written a couple books? I've written 32. Woo, just a couple, huh? <laughs> 32 books. I am a writer. Um, the first book I ever wrote was a cookbook called French Tarts, which was accepted by the first publisher I approached when I was about 24. And um, I couldn't cook, and I'd never written anything before, but I realized that it was all about an idea and a title. So that was my first success. I then went on and wrote 13 word processing handbooks for mainstream publishers, Macmillan, McGraw-Hill, Pittman, people like that. And then I went, then I was living abroad. And then in 1998, I started my own publishing company. And after another cookbook, which I'd co-authored with a friend on dates, cooking with dates in Oman, we then wrote the first edition, sorry, I then wrote the first edition of Career in Your Suitcase, which is still in print today. This is the fourth edition, which was co-authored with Colleen Reichrath smith who is a careers consultant and Canadian and also lives abroad. She lives in the Netherlands. And um, I wrote that and Forced to Fly. And then since then, I just wrote a book a year. All non-fiction, apart from a novel that I published in about 2011 called Sunshine Soup. It had always been my dream to write a novel. That was, that's about an expat wife based in Dubai. And um, I wrote a volume of poetry as well. Ah, very interesting. Okay, so I think our viewers will be interested to hear about how to have a portable career. And that's what one of your books is about, right? Yeah, Career in Your Suitcase is about a portable having a portable career. It's about how to create and maintain and grow a career overseas. When I first started working for myself, we were in Dubai, and that was before the internet, because this was 1987, I went there. You probably weren't even born, but anyway. <laughs> 
1987. And um, back then I worked in Dubai. I taught word processing. I was also a freelance journalist and uh, I ran a writer's circle. And then we moved to Oman, which was just a four hour drive down the road. But it felt like I threw away all my contacts and had to start again. And in Oman, uh, there was no call for right for teaching word processing. Oh, I'd also been running a CV writing service that dried up as well. I used to do my business via fax. In those days. <laughs> so I was still a freelance journalist. And um, that was the only thing I could do in Oman was be a freelance journalist. So I had to dump the other things. And then when we left Oman, again, it felt like I threw my business cards in the skip with my flip flops on the way out. And uh, we went to Norway and I had to begin again. And there I couldn't get any work as a freelance journalist. So I, I learned that I had to work out what there was, what there was inside me that would work wherever I was going. And I had to be many things. I had to be flexible, adaptable. I had to be open to opportunities. I had to listen to what people were complaining about. Let's say, for example, if people say, oh, I wish I knew how to use a computer or I wish I knew how to write my life story or there's nobody here to do whatever and listen to their problems and think how I could turn that into a business of my own. Um, and everywhere is different, you know, because in, in Dubai and Oman, I couldn't have a work permit. So I had to do things that I could just do through word of mouth. In Norway, I couldn't get any writing work in English. Everybody had to speak Norwegian, so I couldn't do that. So that was when I started writing for international publications. That's when I started to look for markets in uh, the UK mainly. And um, so I've had to be adaptable and to, and to work with whatever the market wants at the time. I haven't taught computers now since, oh, I can't. Since 1993, I haven't taught computers. Um, and then when I got back to England, I ended up being editor of a magazine called Woman Abroad, which was fantastic. And then when that ended in 2002, again, I didn't know what I was going to do. And But I had learned along the way that networking was absolutely key. And it was it was not about what you knew, but who you knew and how to network without seeming pushy. You know, a lot of people think that networking is all about just putting your business card out there and handing it to people. It's not. It's about making friends. And I'll never forget, in 1998, I met a woman called Donna Messer, who's Canadian and ran Connect Us Canada. And she taught me all I know about networking and that has stayed with me till this day. Donna Messer unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago. And she taught me, you do business with people who like you and you do business with people who are like you. I think that is absolutely key. And so for me, networking has always been absolutely my top priority. And so in the old days, I used to network by belonging to business groups, local business groups. I even started my own because there wasn't one where I was living. By being in a group, I always made sure people noticed me. So I made sure people noticed me by being on the board. So I would either run the group myself or I'd be on the board. And there was a group in The Hague called Connecting Women, and I ended up being chair for a couple of years because you need people to know you. You need to stand up in front of a crowd because you meet one person in the street, then one person knows about you. But you, you speak at a meeting, and if you're the person hosting it, then there are 30, 40 people in the room who then know your name. So... Um, I've, I've always wanted to get my name out there and have my name known. And an awful lot more people know me than I realise because I've always got people coming up to me and saying hi in the street and I don't know who they are because that's the disadvantage, that when you're the one standing up in front of the audience, they all know you, but you don't know them. Oh, that's funny. Okay, so you say you want to network, but you don't want to be pushy. Can you give our viewers kind of some tips on what that looks like? Donna Messer taught me it's all about giving. You give first and you give gifts, but the gifts don't cost anything. And I'm quoting from her, the, kiss, the gifts don't cost anything because you talk to somebody and you engage and you ask them questions and you listen. And they might say something like, um, oh, I wish I knew where I could get good tacos in The Hague or whatever. 
and you say, oh, I know the name of a good place to get tacos. And what you give them is the name of a restaurant. And the best thing you can possibly do is to say, give me your mobile phone number or give me your email address and I will email you with the name of some great taco restaurants, for example. And that's that's what you do. You give people connections or somebody will say, I really could do with somebody to clean my windows, my the windows in my house. And you say, oh, I know somebody. Give me your email address and I'll get in touch later. And you make sure you follow up. So that's how you start making the connections, by giving somebody something that costs you absolutely nothing. And I have a, a, a friend um, called Stephanie Ward, who runs Firefly Coaching. And she is the queen of networking. And she does it in such a simple way. She never forgets my birthday. Hmm. She never forgets uh, maybe something I've done. I like maybe I went for coffee or maybe she knew that um, somebody in my family had been ill. She would always just send me a note send me a card, just a postcard. It's a brilliant networking tip. Something as simple as a thank you. Something as simple as remembering a birthday. And it puts you in the top of mind, top of somebody else's mind. And then you are remembered. It's all about being remembered, being liked, and knowing people who are like you. So you have to just make friends. It's as simple as that. Great advice. Okay, so if someone's moving to a, a new country, uh, what do they need to start up a portable career? Well, the first thing they need to do is look inside themselves and see what they're good at. And it's interesting because I was reading something in the Times this week, I think it was in the Times, that people said for a long time, and I know I said this to my own kids and I wish I hadn't, that it was all about finding your passion. And it is about finding your passion. But most importantly, it's about finding what you're good at, finding out what your gift is. If your gift is also your passion, which I think is, I am lucky enough to say that my gift is my passion, um, then that is the starting point. Because if you don't do something that you like and that you're good at, how are you going to get out of bed in the morning when you've moved country again? Right. And you're in and a new place and you, you still don't even know you haven't got a doctor and you don't know where you can um, go and get petrol for the car or you run out of gas for your barbecue and you don't know where to get it I mean you've got all this other stuff constantly going round and round your head so how are you going to be motivated to sit down and find work or stand up or go out and find work if you don't love what you do so you've got to love it you've got to love it and you've got to be good at it and you've got to believe and know that you're good at it so that's the first thing so first of all you look inside yourself and in career in your suitcase we've kind of come up with a roadmap of what it is you have to do so the first step is to look inside yourself and really get to know yourself and then the next step is to look outside yourself and see what's needed and you have to talk to people and you have to do research and you have to do informational interviews and, and you have to look on the internet and you have to find out if there's really a need you know how um in i don't know if you've you have the apprentice everywhere i know you have the apprentice in the states and you have it in the uk before people come up with a new product they go out and do market research and they find a focus group so you got to ask because it's really easy to think it would be such a good idea to do x and then you find because if you're new somewhere how do you really know whether somebody else is also doing i don't know home decorating or or running a uh, cookie business or whatever you don't know so you've got to find out what's really out there. You've got to do your research. And then you have to make it happen with networking, with maybe with a mastermind group, with joining networks, with learning, with growing, and with marketing. Okay, so do you think that anyone can move to a different country and start up a career if they do their research, they network, um, they have the passion, they're good at it, things like that? Or are, do you think there are some jobs that that would be really difficult to do? Well, there's definitely there are some, some things that are much easier to do than others wherever you are in the world. And these days, providing you've got an internet connection, there are so many things you can do on via the web. So many things. You can do life coaching, you can do counseling, you can do editing, you can do website design. There are loads. Of, you can help people with social media. There's so many things you can do via the internet. So providing you've got the internet, 
you will find something. But sometimes you have to adjust your business slightly to make it work where you are. So, for example, when I was living in Oman, I wrote a date cookbook. And we did really well selling the date cookbook because there were lots of dates on palm trees in Oman. And then we went to Norway and I didn't sell any copies because nobody was interested. I also was making date chutney and selling that, but I couldn't even buy dates at a normal price when I was in Norway. So you have to think, well, what else can I do? So what I did there was I thought, what was it that I was doing in Oman that worked? What can I do in Norway that works that is still using my core, my core values, my core gift, if you like, which was writing. So it was while I was there that I decided to write Career in Your Suitcase and Forced to Fly because it was still writing, it was still books, it was still creating something there was a need for. So your book, uh, Career in Your Suitcase, does it give tips and highlights on how to start any type of portable business or is it mainly focusing on if you're a writer? Oh, no, 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 nothing to do with if you're a writer. No, 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 it's to do with any sort of business any sort of business at all and there's lots of stuff on how to start a business what you need to know how about writing a business plan and growing your business all sorts of stuff yeah it's completely and utterly general and there are many businesses you can do anywhere so for example you know say you wanted to run a um i don't know let, let's say a, a a tart making business in in europe it'd be quite easy to do a tart making business but if you were to go let's say to malaysia where i lived last it's almost impossible to make pastry there because it's never cool. You've got to make, you've got to have a really cold kitchen and work on a marble slab and make, try and keep your hands cold in order to make pastry. So you might just not be able to move that, but you can still cook. You can make a different, some, make something else, like make brownies. So, yeah, anything can work, but you've got to be prepared to adjust it. Okay, so you get into the country, do your research, um, and see what works best for the people around you. Yeah. So tell us about your other book. Oh, the other book. Oh, well, this is just, I just thought, I threw in your suitcase, I showed you because it was one of the first ones, and it's now in its fourth edition. This is the most recent book, which I co-wrote with um, Terry Ann Wilson, and it's called Monday Morning Emails. And this one came out in April. And this is a memoir about two expat wives living overseas. And we've, we've got boys. We've both moved an awful lot. Our boys are all in their 20s. Um, we've had to deal with a huge amount of things from illness um, and traumas and uh, limbo and retirement and menopause and trying to get a career and all sorts of things. So this is a really honest look at the reality of living overseas. So it's completely and utterly different from Karoo in Your Suitcase. And it's, um, it's, it's a memoir, but it's written as emails to each other that we sent once a week over a period of nine months. Oh, wow. So it's something different. Yeah. Currently, you're in the Netherlands. Would you mm. say out of the different countries that you've lived in that one was easier than the other with a portable career? Yeah. Uh, the Netherlands is really great because when I lived here the first time, we were lived here for nine years, I set up my business here very easily, costs absolutely nothing. You go to the Chamber of Commerce and you set up a business and you register with the um, tax office. So that's the Karma van Koophandel and the Belastingdienst. And you register with them and you set your business up. And you have to submit your accounts quarterly because you have to submit your VAT quarterly here but it's very easy there are lots of tax breaks and apart from the fact that it's in Dutch it was extremely easy to run my business here no problems whatsoever um, so this was really easy but when I was in Malaysia I wasn't officially allowed to run a business um, without getting a local sponsor and creating a proper business so I didn't and when I was so when I was in Malaysia I set up my business in the UK so that I was legal and I actually didn't look for any clients in Malaysia. I only worked with people outside Malaysia, um, which was fine because with the internet you can. And my author's mentoring business, I do it all via Skype. I have clients all over the world. I have one in, one in Africa at the moment. Um, I have them in England. I have them well, all over the place, um, Norway, um, all, all sorts, I can't even think. There's so many people, so many places. And it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. 
So um, it doesn't, my business is registered in the UK now. I haven't bothered moving it to the Netherlands. Would you recommend a certain country because of cost of living and startup costs are cheaper? Well, Malaysia is really cheap cost of living, but starting a business isn't necessarily cheap. No, I don't really recommend anywhere, to be quite honest. I think you have to make it work wherever you are and be prepared to bend the rules a bit or find a way to make it work. I think the hardest thing is when you know you really can't work. So when we lived in Brunei, I um, wanted to go and run a workshop for the, a local um, group of, of spouses, and they wouldn't even let me run a workshop for free there in case, because you're so not allowed to work there, in case the somebody who attended the workshop ended up hiring me independently. Ah, okay. So it's really important when you move to a new city or country to do your homework on what it looks like to set things up. Yeah. Yeah, so when I was in Brunei, um, again, my business was based in the UK, so I just put it that way. But it's uh, it's it's not always as easy as you think. Okay, but nowadays um, there is the ease of the internet, so you can live in a country but not necessarily work in that country, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Great. So do you have any final thoughts or anything else you want to share with our viewers about your books or any tips on um, on having a portable career? Um, well, I suppose what I would like to say is that um, a portable career is something that weighs nothing. You shouldn't have to um, take loads of stock with you wherever you go. In order to a real portable career weighs nothing. You have your education, you have your experience, you have your qualifications, you have your testimonials, you have a client base, and you should have a network. And they weigh absolutely nothing. So I would, I would definitely say that. Um, I think that a differentiator for anybody who wants to run a portable career is an online presence. You have to have an online presence. You have to be Googleable, so somebody keys your name in and you come up at the top of a search engine. So you have to have a website you, or, you have, or a Facebook page, but you have to have an online presence. And one of the best things you can do to make you stand out from the crowd, and this is going to sound like it's a sales pitch, is to write a book or write a booklet or write something to hand out that makes you look like an authority and different from everybody else. Okay, great advice. Thanks so much today for telling us a little bit about having a portable career. Hey, you're welcome. <laughs>